Today I'm going to go over the Bosch 1617 router EVS kit that comes with the plunge base and the fixed base. Currently this is sitting at 248 for the entire kit and this is everything you get with it as far as I remember. If you only want the fixed base and the router, 149 and then there are some other accessories we'll go over later that I think are worth having. With the 1617 you also get this very nice carrying case that has a spot for the fixed base the plunge, as well as the router, and a bunch of other accessories if you wish to buy them later. And you know, I think it's a very nice way if you're on the job, you're moving, anything like that to carry the router and keep it safe. It's got router bit storage. It's a very nice accessory. In the box, we get a half inch collet and a quarter inch collet so that you can use both half inch and quarter inch shanked router bits. You get your loosening and tightening wrenches. These are purely straight, so they're a little difficult for a router table. You get this Allen wrench, which is used to change the height on the fixed base if you are uh, under a router table. And you get some screws to help mount it into a router table. The 1617 is a two and a quarter horsepower router. It has a, a variable speed and a slow start so that it doesn't jerk too much when it's starting. In this review, I'm going to go over the variety of uses for this. We're going to go over the stiff base, the plunge base, as well as inner router table. And I'm going to go over the good, the bad, and the ugly of this router because I think there's a lot of good for it. If you don't want to watch the rest of the video, what I'll tell you right now is that I do recommend this router. I'd give it a 7.5, 8 out of 10. I think it's a great value. And if you can only own one router, I think this is a very good option. We're going to start off by going through how to use the fixed base. And we're going to begin by how to insert this into the fixed base. You will notice on each side of the router there are these two grooves. There and there. Take note of where your power button is. On the inside of this, there is a small pin right here on the right hand side with this on your left. We're going to align the bottom of this groove with that pin. We're going to twist and drop it down. I'm a right-handed person, so I like to have it on my left-hand side, the power button, so that I can easily turn it on and off. So I'm going to go in with this to the left of the pin, make sure this is open, drops, and we're going to just twist it, and it will go down. Now we are in there at our first position. This goes down to a second position using this button. Hold on to your router, and it drops down, position. And this will bring this automatically lower so that when you have your micro adjustment, you can go even further out. If you want the bit less out, you pull it up to the first position. And then you will lock the router down and your router is in there. You have access to your on off button and you can go from there. I want to go over how to put this router bit in here to then use in the fixed base. You can do this with the bit in there, which is generally what I do. So I'm going to start out I'm going to put it in there Again, put this out based on a the minimum guideline. Certain router bits have a line on them that will say you need to have it in minimum that deep. Other ones do not have a line, but a general rule of thumb is down and then an eighth to a quarter of an inch back out. I can go a little more, but this is going to help determine how far out we can go or how far in we can go when we have it in our router. If you need to go quite a ways out, stick it a little farther out. If you need to go relatively shallow, go a little more in, but do not bottom the bit out. To tighten this, I like to start off by just finger twisting it. And then when you get close, adjust the bit. Finger tighten it until the bit will barely move. We're gonna take our two wrenches. The smaller wrench will go on this silver part. I like to do this with the router facing forward. This one goes here. I like to place this on the table and go over, and we're gonna go over again. Now we want it until it stops moving, but we do not wanna put our whole weight behind this thing. You do not need to have it the tightest possible you can get it. So enough weight that it stops moving, but don't put your whole weight into it. There are two ways to put this into your router with the bit on. The first, and I think the simplest, is to go upside down. Again, we're going to locate our grooves here, note our power button, we're going to find the pin on the inside, we're going to line them up, got to make sure this is unlocked, we twist, down, lock. Now at this point, remember, you cannot stick this just 
on the table or else your router bit will go in there. So once you're in this position, you've locked it, you have to keep your router like this. The second option to put it in with the bit in there is to mount this over something like a two by four, very similar how you would insert it into a router table uh, lift. Again, we line up our grooves, we determine where we want the power, and you go down, in, turn, and we're in. And this shouldn't be hitting the bottom uh, of your table if you have this lifted up enough. The way this micro adjust works is that there is a small little half washer thing holding it on there. And this twists to the right to move your router up. It's connecting to a little pin in here, which inserts into these pins or these spaces here on the side of the router. So as we twist, that raises that pin up or down. Now, if you really need to go shallow, I suggest starting this almost all the way up. So turn it to the left until it stops. Put your router in, your bit in, see where you are. You may perhaps need to put your bit into the router further or further out, depending upon how long your bit is. If you really need to go shallow, a, a shorter cutting length bit is an easier option than having to deal with going in and out multiple times. Now, once we have this in a router, we need to determine our depth. You can use setup blocks here and just put it next to the bit, or you can use a ruler. However, on these, there is obviously an open space here, so it's very difficult to go up like this. On certain rulers, like this Starrett ruler, there is a side measuring thing here to go across and measure like that. I find that very handy. I believe these are $20, $25, but there may be other cheaper rulers that have measuring on the both sides so that you can lay it flat. And we will then use the micro adjust from here, unlock, turn your micro adjust to go up or down, and just use the ruler to eyeball it and measure. Always do a test cut before you plunge into your workpiece or go into your workpiece, because sometimes you may just need to test the micro adjust a little one way or the other to get it perfect. Now the way I like to remove the bit is to put this one on here and line this one up so that we're not far away from these two. There is an initial loosening that will be the first yank, and I just like to pinch these. That will initially loosen this, and then you can start twisting this up, it will stop again. And again, I like to go back and squeeze. This prevents your knuckles from hitting each other. Squeeze, squeeze, and then we've got it loosened up enough to take the router bit out. On our fixed base, we're gonna have two little knobs here. I believe they do not come in the router, but I'm not 100% sure. They should be in the box if they don't come in the router. Now, to enter the fixed base into here, we're gonna go into these two holes right here. We're gonna back these off, and they're knurled, though they do have screwdriver uh, flathead marks. And we're going to go in, and we're gonna just start by getting it now what I'd like to do here is just do a simple, I believe they call it a groove when it goes with the grain and then a uh, dado when it goes across. I just call them dados, all of them, so just bear with me on that. We're going to line up a router bit. I've pulled it back in for now, and we're just going to eyeball it near that groove. Now remember, a router spins in a certain direction. The base says on it. So when we cut, we want to always be cutting into the turn. So generally we want to cut our, if we're going longer, wider than the router bit, we want to cut the near side first and then move our router over that way. So we're going to line it up with the line. Make sure your router's unplugged. And we're just going to put it there and we're going to lock these in. We'll be able to use our micro adjust to fine tune it. There's one on each side, just lock these in. Now that we're pretty close, we can eyeball down there. The micro adjust works with these two knobs right here. You back it off, back the knobs off, and this knob right here goes in and out to either push the router forward, backward, and then forward. So that you can move just a little at a time. I mean, we're talking less than a 64th at a time. And then when you get it where you want it to be on your line, you lock these in and you're good to go. Now remember that because this cuts in this direction, we're gonna go this way. Now it's at this point we're gonna turn it over, the router is still unplugged, 
we're going to use our micro adjust to get the bit height to what we want. We're gonna undo this first, and then we're gonna adjust this while using our eye level or your ruler or setup blocks to get to a height you want. I like to start at about a 16th or less. Uh, don't put too much strain on the router. It's not really necessary. We're gonna lock it back in. And with the fixed space, you have to start off of your piece. With the plunge, you can go down in, but with the fixed space, we start off. We're going to make sure our piece is hanging over the edge slightly so that our edge guide runs on that. We're going to eye up pretty close to the start. I highly suggest for when you're doing any kind of fixed base or plunge routing where your head's gonna be near it to have a good dust mask and eye protection on because this stuff will fly. There is a mechanism with the fixed base to hook a vacuum into, though you have to have certain reducers and I just don't find that it does all that much. At this point, now that we've got everything all set up, we're gonna plug our router in and we're going to make sure the speed is set for relatively smaller bits to number six or five, the wider the diameter, the slower the speed you need to go. If you're getting burning, try turning it down or up and give a test. Your speed of the cut will also depend on how clean the cut is. And we're gonna go ahead with this pushed up against it and our bit off of the piece and we're gonna turn the router on. Remember with a fixed base that when you come out of the other side, your bit's gonna be off of there and your weight is going to be off a fair bit of the piece. So you have to hold this on. And this is why I like to have it on my left hand so that I can just thumb this off. If you wanna use your other hand, insert this the other way and it will be over there. You can stop this in the groove, just hold on to it tight. Uh, generally though, if you wanna stop in a groove, we'll use a plunge base. To remove the router bit, a lot of people have this issue of their knuckles hitting. And so what I like to do is I like to put this down here and just press down. And then you just pull it out like that. And when we go over the plunge base, I'm gonna swap this out for an upcut spiral bit as they are the prime bit to plunge into something. Now the plunge base works very similar in terms of inserting the router as the fixed base does. We've got pins in here We've got the grooves here, and as you go in, you're gonna lock and twist. Remember to pay attention to your power button. Again, I like to have mine on the left-hand side. You may prefer on the right. Make sure this plunge is all the way up. This is the plunging mechanism here. You just push this down with your thumb and go down. I find it to be very ergonomic. We're gonna twist, and we're gonna lock. Now with this, there's not two settings to go into, you just go all the way down and then you're in. Now to use the traditional depth, depth stop on the side of this, we're gonna plunge the router down until our bit is just touching the wood. We're gonna loosen this up, but we're gonna make sure it's touching there and we're gonna move this scale to zero. This little clear thing moves up and down to zero. And we're gonna lift this up until we get our desired height, our depth, so let's put it around a half inch. Obviously this will be facing you so it's much easier to see. You got there. And now you lock this in, and when you plunge down, your router will go a half inch out or however far out you set it. On the plunge base, we have a depth stop system as well as a micro adjust system. This right here turns to go up and down. So if you're gonna do a plunge cut, essentially what you wanna do is take your bit and you're gonna plunge it down to the surface. We'll come back. I like to take this all the way to the top each of these are 1 8 inch gradients. We're gonna unlock this, push it all the way down, and we're gonna lock it back in. Now at this point, if you're going to something like an eighth of an inch, quarter inch, 3 16th, whatever, you can just use these gradients. However, if you need to have a specific depth, so now that we've got this down to zero, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to loosen this up, we're gonna to wanna to pull this up, and we're gonna to want to set our block in here. We'll Unlock this a slight bit so we can get this out and we'll go back a little bit. Now what essentially happens is that when you plunge down, you are able to go out the length of your setup block. So one of the things I really like to do with the plunge base is 
to cut inserts for lids, to cut a groove for a lid on box joints. You obviously can't have the lid groove go all the way through or else you will have to plug a hole from the outside. So just picture this as being a box joint. We cannot go all the way through this. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to plunge in somewhere here and here and plunge out here. So I'm gonna just show you how to plunge through this and how to create a nice uh, lid groove or base groove for your box jointed boxes. So to do our groove, we're gonna set up the edge guide the same way we did on the fixed base. Of course, with a plunge base, we can just have it on our workpiece. We're just gonna loosen these and slide this in there. Now again, make sure this is over the edge, your piece of wood. We're gonna go and we're gonna line up the plunge. And again, we're gonna start on the edge closest to us. So in this case, the bottom of the box. We will lock this down. And then we can go back and micro adjust it using this knob right here. I'm about right on there, but I'm just gonna go forward a little bit, turn it to the right, and we'll stop right there. Now we're gonna start off again by setting our depth to zero. We're gonna go down. We're gonna bring this, obviously this will be facing you. We'll bring that all the way down. Let's put it back at zero. And we're gonna lock that there. And now if we wanna do a quarter inch, which is what we'll do here, we will turn this, that's an eighth of an inch, that's a quarter inch. I like to go about an eighth of an inch at a time. We're gonna find our starting spot. Again, we're gonna start inside of where the box joint is. We're gonna go down, line it up. I like to have the cord over the handle here so that we never get in the way. So if you have a way of holding it off to the side somehow, that works too. We've lined it up, and we're just gonna plunge down that first eighth of an inch. And you will notice we have now started into the finger and exited into the finger either side. We did not have to go through and you would just need to clean that up with a chisel a little bit, and you will move up each time to get your width correct, your thickness. Now one thing I wanna point out about this, and this is one of the downsides, is that this has a little bit of play in the plunge. You can go a little left, a little right as you're plunging down. Unless you are holding it with perfect force on either side, this can have a little left and right play as you plunge. Now, personally, I use this to my advantage. On the last pass for cleaning up the bottom or the first, however you want to do it, I tilt the bit slightly in. And then once I'm plunged in, I let it move into place. And we're talking about a, a hair here, less than a hair, but sometimes you can't afford to have a small little gap. So you plunge kind of pressing down more on the right and a little less on the left, and it will start in a bit, and then you naturally let it come in you do your cut and then you try to go straight up. Now again, I've got the on off switch closest to my left hand so that I can operate it like this, plunge here. And we just start a little off, we give it a little bit of a gauge and we just go in. And in three passes, I just go a little bit at a time and we get the full edge profile on there and you're good to go, very clean. I like that Diablo bit. And that's the benefit of the plunge router for doing edge profiles is you could take a little bit at a time. If you wanna get the guide accessory to be able to ride uh, patterns, I use uh, this keyhole one occasionally. You have to buy this add-on accessory. The way this works is it has two mounting screws that mount in here and here. 
And so we take this and it's going to go on the inside here. And there are two holes. I'm not sure if you can see those. One and two. And you're going to screw it in from underneath through these two holes. The easiest way to do this is to hang this over the side and to hold it up to it and drop them in and screw them in one at a time. It's a bit of a pain, but it's easier than, in my opinion, doing it with your router in there as it weighs less. So once we have this mounted in here, the way this mechanism essentially works is it pushes and opens on the bottom these right here move. In this system, you will get a bunch of individual ones as well as this one here. This is to use with, I believe they call the Porter cable style that twist in and out. So that's not to be used with these. These essentially have little pin areas on them and you line them up. You open it by pulling this up and they slide in there and it closes on them and they are locked in. There's also a centering cone to help center this base so that you are directly uh, straight in line. With the port of cable ones, you just screw each side, this side on the inside, this one on the outside, and same process, you push slash pull the lever, twist it in there, and it's locked in. I wanna go over how to use the fixed base as a router lift in a router plate. I have the Craig router table. The table itself comes with one of these. You can buy these as well to mount into a table you make. Craig sells ones that have pre-drilled holes for specific routers. They have one for the Bosch. I had another one where I didn't have the pre-drilled holes and you essentially take your base. There are three screw holes here, here, and here. And you use these guidelines as a reference for centering your router. And then what I like to do is use a punch, push the punch through, and it leaves a mark. And then you go and you drill your holes. Generally, you wanna drill them in these three areas where Craig has already done it on this one, because you will need to be able to insert this through one of these holes in order to raise and lower your router. To insert this into the router plate, we need to remove this black plate from here. There are four screws holding this on. I believe they are Torx head, uh, the five star one. So you're going to need a driller driver to remove these. Do not lose these, they are very tiny. Once we've got the last one off, we can remove the fixed base. You can see it's a little dirty. And we now have on the underside of this one, two, three. Now these are going to line up with our three holes and Bosch has included screws that fit into these. See they're specific screws. I like to do this from above. Uh, you can take the router bit out if you want and we're going to line up with these three holes, with the three holes we've drilled. Uh, the Phillips head, the fatter ones that uh, they've included go onto these and you just finger tighten each one from above until you line up with your holes. Now as we're putting this on, you'll need to notice that there's a small black Allen wrench hole right here. You're gonna wanna align that with whichever one of these lines up once your three screws have lined up so that from above, you can raise and lower the router. Now that we have this mounted in here, we're gonna pay attention to where our on off switch is and we want that facing us. And we're just gonna lower it in there with the cord going through. And on the Craig router table, you will have your leveling screws and you will screw this down. Now that we've got it installed, at least on the Craig, you can put your ring in, tighten it down. And this is where the raising and lowering mechanism comes in. There's a small Allen wrench hole right here that this goes into. The raising and lowering mechanism is this right here. To use this, you have to unlock this first. 
and then you can come back up and twist this to raise and lower. On this one, go to the left, we'll raise the bit, and you just go through it to whatever height you want, and then you go back down and you lock it in place. Now remember, this router can also be put up on another one if you need a lot of bit height. So there is, when this clicked in, when you initially put the base in there, and the base onto the router, there are two click spots. So if you need to raise it up while you're down here, you unlock this and you simply push it up and it will lock in. And now you've got your bit at the higher setting. So now that we've got our router mounted in here, I will go through and show you how to do a few simple cuts. However, this is one of the bad parts of this system. On here, you will see this small black ring. This is essentially what allows it to raise and lower. This can pop off at times. I have a second one of these because it has popped off a few times. And even though you can buy replacements, in my experience, they never stay on as well as the original, which led to me buying an actual router lift to stop dealing with this. But for the sake of this video, let's assume that you wanna use your Craig fixed router base. I'm just gonna go through cutting a basic groove through here. It's a great router to mount in a table. Hopefully one day I'm gonna get a second one so I can just leave it in the table to stop having to put it in and out of the router lift. But for now, I use one and I just put it in and out. And just like that, we have the beginning of our groove at about a 30 second inch deep. And you will just continue to raise it from there to go deeper. Another place where the Bosch 1617 really shines at the router table is with flush trimming. I've already cut this with the bandsaw to a rough area. I'm just gonna go through and uh, flush trim this and show you how efficient it is. And just like that, we have a nice clean flush trim, perfectly matching that pattern. Does a great job, it's got plenty of power. It'll do any decent shape you want. You can obviously get very nice flush trim bits, but this is just the white side straight bit. I think it works great for the price. Probably the second most use I get out of the Bosch 1617 is at the router table doing box joints. This is the quick and dirty jig I used. And what I really find amazing is how stable it holds itself. There's very little wiggle in the router bit and you are able to get some very precise, clean box joints. And you can make a variety of jigs to do this, but I just, I love the versatility that allows it to do this as well. To do the basic box joint, just turn it on. And just like that, very clean. Obviously the upcut spiral router bit help. Now, just to quickly go over putting this back on, if you take your router out, just hang this uh, micro adjuster over the edge of something. We're gonna get these four little screws back and we're just gonna line up our four holes, these little guys right here, and we're gonna screw it back in. Now there are two issues that I have with the Bosch 1617. Uh, one of them is very small and the other is potentially a larger problem. The first is that these handles on the plunge uh, loosen up over time. And to fix that, just a torque screw, two of them. And then on the inside, there's a much larger torque screw in there. I'm gonna just tighten that up. And you remove all the play. The second major issue with the 1617 is that this power button is not insulated at all. And occasionally dust and whatnot will build up in there and it just flat out won't start. Now, generally compressed air through here and compressed air through here has solved it for me. But I've heard of other people who have just not been able to get it solved. Uh, you can attempt opening it up uh, make sure to warranty register your tool first in case you have any issues. This is an expensive tool, but if that happens, if it stops turning on and off, just get the compressed air out and the vacuum out and go through both of those. 
So for a final conclusion, I would rate this as a seven and a half, eight out of 10 for the money, right? This is not a three and a quarter horsepower Triton that you're gonna be taking off gigantic uh, amounts at a time, but it's incredibly versatile. These two, I believe, are about 130 to 150 on their own, all three of them, somewhere between 230 to 250, and I think it's absolutely worth it. This router, the power, it can do so much. The versatility is amazing. This can also be used as a mounting base. You know, the three main issues are the mounting mechanism that raises and lowers the height. It relies on this very small little piece, which I've had come off twice. The slop in the raising and lowering of this left and right, and then the power button. None of these things are deal breakers in any way. Uh, obviously, I got frustrated enough with the raising and lowering on this that I bought a, a router lift, but it was about a year before I really uh, had that issue happen, and I used the lift all the time, or when this was my lift all the time. I use this on probably a daily basis. Uh, it's one of my favorite tools that I own, and I absolutely recommend it to anyone who's looking for just buying a single router or has a trim router and wants to do more, wants to mount it in the table, wants to have way more versatility. I also think there's great value in this edge guide. I'm pretty sure it's around $40, $50, uh, especially if you don't have a router table or you want to do grooves and on long pieces that are too big for your router table or are very tiny and you need to do a stop groove with a box joint or something like that. I've been very impressed with this for the price.